Hi, I'm Melissa Schilling, and I'm a professor at NYU, and I'd like to tell you about my new book, Quirky, which is the culmination of six years of research on serial breakthrough innovators. Throughout history, a handful of people have been noted as profoundly important innovators. We're not talking about the one-hit wonders with one big idea. We're talking about people who dedicated their entire lives to introducing one game-changing innovation after another. These people often accomplished things that others had said were impossible like wireless transmission of energy or communication, affordable water purification that can turn anything wet into clean drinking water, and reusable rockets that will dramatically reduce the cost of space travel. What makes some people so spectacularly innovative? Is it some gift of biology? Is it training and experience? Is it luck? Studying these innovators deeply reveals the traits, experiences, and beliefs that drove them to challenge assumptions that others take for granted and to stick tenaciously with their projects despite criticism or failure. All of the innovators I studied were extremely intelligent, that was clear, but intellect alone was not enough. Most of the innovators I studied exhibited a marked sense of separateness, a feeling of being detached or of not belonging that helped them to ignore or reject the rules and norms that constrained others. Albert Einstein articulated it most clearly. He noted that he didn't feel the need for direct contact with human beings and that his whole heart never fully belonged to either his country or his family, but he believed it made him a more independent thinker. Most of the innovators also exhibited an intense idealism that drove them to exert tremendous effort toward a goal they believed was intrinsically honorable or noble. They often sacrificed comfort, leisure, and even family and health in pursuit of these goals. Because the goals they were pursuing were more important than themselves, it kept them focused, it kept them motivated, and it gave them resilience to negative feedback. It didn't matter what others thought of them because they were pursuing something they considered more important than whether or not people liked them. All of the innovators also exhibited very high levels of something psychologists call self-efficacy. This is a form of task-related confidence that reflects a person's faith in their ability to overcome obstacles and achieve their goals. People with high self-efficacy are more likely to take on hard projects and to stick with them even through the tough times because they believe they will ultimately succeed when you have high self-efficacy, things that seem impossible to others do not seem impossible to you. Of course, being at the right place at the right time still matters. If Steve Jobs had not grown up in Silicon Valley during the 60s and 70s, he would have had an entirely different career trajectory than the one we now know. He might have done amazing things, he was an incredibly driven and insightful person, but he would not have done the things we associate with him today. Studying Marie Curie's story also does much to show us why lists of most famous innovators tend to be dominated by men from developed countries. Prior to the late 20th century, women were not supposed to be in science or business. When Curie was a young woman, most European universities didn't admit women, and it was only through her extraordinary effort and resourcefulness that she obtained higher education. And then, even after her brilliance and her accomplishments were irrefutable, she was denied access to the Academy of Sciences and nearly denied a Nobel Prize, all because of her gender. She also felt she had to relinquish nearly all of the child-caring duties for her two daughters to her father-in-law in order to pursue science. That was a pretty dear price for Curie and her daughters to pay. Today, there are still many people who don't have equal access to education, but fortunately, norms are changing, and the lists of most famous innovators will change too. One of the most important things we gain from studying these innovators is realizing that even though there are ways in which they are special or inimitable, there are also ways we can tap many of the same mechanisms to unleash the breakthrough potential in us all. There are ways we can help people challenge assumptions. We can increase their sense of self-efficacy, and we can nurture their ideals. There are also ways we can make sure there are more right times and right places for everyone. Thank you.